Flight Centre Search, Compare, Book. The experience of over 3,000 travel specialists comes directly to you. So your next holiday is just a few clicks away. Search thousands of destinations, flights, hotels and car hire. Compare and plan your perfect holiday easily and all online. Have questions? Give us a call 24-7. Flight Centre. Search, compare, book, visit or call. Check out flightcentre.com.au. Call Flight Centre, Lewis Welcome to this Football Brisbane Media feature game presentation. I'm Darren Lutton. It's round 16 of the Flight Centre Premier League and we're at Cornubia Park for the M1 Derby between Logan Lightning and Rochdale Rovers. They of course are playing for the M1 Cup. It's 10 all at the moment from the under 12s through to the reserves. Both teams have scored 10 points. So the winner of tonight's seniors game will decide who wins the trophy. Let's head straight to the action. Calling the game is Rafe Griffin. Thanks very much, Darren. Here's the home side going through their final paces. And a couple of potential senior stars in the making, perhaps. Looking on at the older charges. Here's how the two teams line up for this round 16 flight centre Premier League match. Logan coach Nick Croydon has elected to start Ryan Meskell between the sticks in recent weeks, while for Roadstale, captain Scott Sargent starts off the bench. Tony Sarai with control of this one, assisted by Anton Chetinian and Jake Beath. And Greg Cheshire, Roachdale captain for the night, appears to have won the toss, but it'll be Logan that get us underway in this first half at Cornubia Park. And Cheshire wins it on there for Shizuno. Now on a run of his own is Cheshire. He's got Mojica Rodriguez inside of him. Puts across into the far post, but no one awaits. Kostovsky. Goulet. Ask Bedoya there, and Rochdale come away with possession and heavily fouled there is John Carlos Salazar. No. Goulet just extends the hand out. We'll take a second look at that on the replay. And Greg Goulet punches into the former Brisbane Raw player. So Logan looking to work it out of their own half here. Kearns, in unfamiliar territory for him. And Cheshire takes a shot on goal. And Meskel puts it out for a corner. So the turnover of possession by Logan in midfield. And Greg Cheshire chances his arm from outside the box. Mel Davey with the ball on there. And this time it's Cumaneo called into action. Blake Kearns, four goals in his debut for Logan a couple of weeks ago. Playing his third game back at the club after a stint in the US College University uh, soccer system. And headed on there by Cheshire, but over the bar. So midway through the first half with... Still scoreless here at Cornubia Park. One of the most heavily anticipated fixtures on the calendar, this one. Bell Dovey on there for Sherwood. Off the crossbar and Rochdale. Will they escape? Brown puts that one high. Well, perhaps the best opportunity of the evening so far. Coming here for Logan. Sherwood. He's able to beat Cumaneo, but not that dreaded crossbar. And headed away there by Howell in the end, and they escape Rochdale. Now Mojica Rodriguez, ball still alive here. He's waiting for the whistle to be blown. Solizano, grass burner, and Meskel's on hand there just in front of Cheshire. Cheshire, has been in the thick of things tonight. Fake knee back for Cheshire. Ball delivered into the back stick. And just evade Solizano. Into the second half now. Still no score. Shizuno. He's got Solizano there. Likes to put a ball in. And again, that woodwork. At the southern end, intervenes. This time it's Cheshire for Rochdale. Tried to loop it up. 
And the crossbar gets in the way once more. Held in tight there was Cheshire. And Tony Sarai has picked out the free kick. So it'll be Mooney. Likes to blast in the free kick. Oh, and Meskel forced into a last-minute save there. Bit of uncertainty perhaps there in the box. Let's see that free kick in again. I think Meskel might have thought he would have had to have contended with a shot from Solizano. It didn't come in the end. And he has to force to deflect it. Chizuno. Mojica Rodriguez. Licks to go himself. Meskel with the save at the near post. Can they clear it here, Lightning? Davis up on high now. Solizano, if he had it first time, would have been a better opportunity. And Logan. Look to move on the counter here. Kern steaming upfield. Wins the return ball and then brought down by Luke Howe. And Tony Sarai produces the yellow card. And Luke Howe acknowledges that he's probably deserving of it. So on the hour mark as we approach it, punched up high by Cumaneo. Logan Corner will be the results. Just over 15 minutes remaining now. Shot blasted in and Cumaneo equal to the task. It's the congratulations of Nagata and Wilson there. We'll get a second look at it. The clearance only as far as Josh Sherwood. And that'll be a save of the month contender from Rochdale's Brandon Cumaneo. Rudkin. Read it through there for Kearns. Claims of handball, not given. Kearns now inside the box. He goes down. Sarai with a decision to make. And Kearns dumbfounded. He thought he might have at least got a corner. Let's take a second look at that. So was there any contact? No, I think Kearns went down easy. He was the last touch off, though. Assistance rules it's off Kearns. Now Shizuno. Both sides trying to get something more out of this than just a point. Of course, it's critical for the finals race and Solizano unmarked there at the far post. And you'd think an A-League striker or a former A-League striker would do a little bit better than that. Second look at it and Solizano clips it the wrong side of the upright. Mesco is getting along quickly to try and cover it but I don't think he would have got there in time and Rochdale may live to rue that one Solizano still perhaps a little bit rusty not a lot of football in recent months and now Mojica Rodriguez is giving away a foul here in critical territory attacking wise for Logan Dean to have infringed against Bell Dovey there so late drama here at Cornubia Park with Logan Lightning on the stroke of 90 minutes with a free kick. Blasted into the wall, takes a deflection. And Cumaneo didn't have to deal with it in the end, but it'll still be a corner to Logan. Mojica Rodriguez, what can he pull out? Mooney. On there for Cheshire. And Meskel couldn't deal with it. Shizuno was in there. And thankfully, I think it might have been Meskel who got a second touch on it. So fourth minute of stoppage time. There is to be a goal. Logan are now in the box seat in their attacking half. Brown with a throw in for Sherwood. And referee Tony Sarai has blown the full-time whistle. It'll be on a shared here in a rare scoreless draw in the Flight Centre Premier League. Logan Lightning nil, Rochdale Rovers nil. And both coaches, Nick Croydon from Logan and Scott McNichol, Rochdale, probably just having a final debrief on the way to the dressing sheds. 
Our flight centre player of the match tonight is Rochdale goalkeeper Brandon Kumanau. Congratulations. Thanks, what did you think of the game tonight? Uh, I thought it was a very good game, you know, uh, very attacking from each team, you know, but I thought that we were very unfortunate that we didn't win because we have a very strong attacking prowess. But, um, you know, like I said, it's very, it's very hard to come here with a win three points and we're very happy with one point. Well, congratulations, you've won $100. Oh, thanks a lot. Excellent. Well, Nick, just one point for you tonight. What were your thoughts on the game? Yeah, good even contest. Could have went either way. I um, thought Rochdale played really well, and I thought um, we executed our game plan extremely well. So um, on another night, we probably win, but um, obviously the quality Rochdale had in their side, we weren't able to get maximum points, but still walking away, please, we're still going in the right direction. So your squad's going to uh, be turning over a few players in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, we've uh, lost uh, Joseph Baldovi. Uh, he's actually signed a La Liga 2 contract in Spain. So, um, you know, once again, another, another player from our club going on to a professional contract. Uh, arrived without one, leaving with one. So, you know, once again, he's improved his game here. He's a fabulous guy around the club. The young kids love him. He does some junior coaching here. And hopefully we might be able to get him back one day. But, um, you know, we wish him well. Uh, and obviously, you know, two of the lads are back to college in August sometime, so there's still another four or five games left in them before they go. Um, but, you know, Greary was out suspended tonight. Mikey Adarkai is back soon. Um, might unleash him versus Holland Park yet. So, um, yeah, so, we, you know, one out, two good boys in, you know. So I actually think we're in a good place depth-wise. You know, reserves, you know, eight teenagers out there and we won 3-0. So eight teenagers, and I think six of them have been here since they were six years old. Not many clubs can say that. With the few weeks that are left, finals, it's, is it the focus? Yeah, definitely. I, I think anything less would be a disappointment. We, um, you know, we wanted to win tonight and we've set ourselves a team goal over the next, you know, I think there's six games remaining. I think probably going to have to win five of them now um, to guarantee a spot. Maybe four and a draw would get us there. Um, all doable. We play the big guns at home. Um, as long as we're taking points, uh, one point or three points away from home. Uh, the ball's in our court, to be honest. You know, there's already some upsets tonight um, and I think Teams are going to keep beating each other as long as Lions keep winning, except against us. Um, I think we'll be there or thereabouts. Well, Scott, by virtue of the draw, you've uh, maintained the M1 Cup. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks for that. It was a uh, priority for, for the club, um, and it was good. You know, We had a couple of good results um, throughout the day, and um, it's always good to win a trophy, and uh, it's good to have a bit of a rivalry between the two clubs, and it was a fantastic crowd here today and a good game of football. And, I thought all the games were, were quite good throughout the day. What did you make of your game tonight? I thought it was good. I thought it was a, a, a decent performance by both sides. Um, they're a good side. It's hard to come here and get the points. So um, I just said to the boys there, we, you, know, you can never underestimate how much one point can do for you as well because that one point jumps us up in the third spot now with the other results that have happened tonight with Lions winning and Albany Creek winning. So that point was massive for us and um, destiny's in our own hands now and if we're going to make the finals we're going to have to do it ourselves and if we're good enough we'll get there. Ruining some missed chances up tonight? Yeah, uh, definitely. We, we had three or four good chances. You know, like um, I think we should have won the game with the chances that we had. Our, ours were clear. Brandon made a fantastic save from a volley but um, we opened them up a couple of times with balls across from Cheshire um, and to be fair, Nico's got to be scoring them and um, we need that to, to get up the league. But as I said, we created, which was the main thing. Um, hopefully we can just take them in the weeks to come. A few weeks to go with till the finals. How do you, you set up the, the team from here on in? Is it, is it still game by game or do you sort of look at, put them in weekly blocks? Um, we're really in a finals race already. To be honest, we're really already playing finals football. So is everyone in the top six, apart from Lions. So we're just going uh, game by game at the moment, taking it one game at a time. I know it's a cliche, but we're doing that. We're not looking too far ahead. And player-wise, we had Scott Sargent out tonight. He came on for the last 10. Daryl Grant got an injury on Thursday. So we missed two key players for our team tonight, but I thought the boys did well. Nicky Wilson did well at left back, the young boy. Ryan was fantastic in the midfield next to Paul. So um, boys have got to do their job and um, that's a collective effort all over the team and it's not just one player that's going to win it for us, it's going to be the 11 that's on the park and the rest of the squad that's needed.